We are less than two weeks away from the solar eclipse that will be visible in its totality right here in Niagara. Dr. Jessica Jackman, Niagara Region's Associate Medical Officer of Health, joins us. And doctor, first off, welcome to Niagara. I know you've only been in this job for a few short months. Came here from Nova Scotia. Yeah, thank you for the warm welcome. Welcome and congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Let's talk about some of the safety issues around this eclipse. So first of all, viewing the eclipse. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that people are doing this safely. Mm -hmm. So the only way to view the eclipse safely is with ISO certified eclipse glasses. And we've distributed some to libraries as well as, well as municipalities, so it's somewhere folks can get those. And we also have a list of reputable vendors on our website. And I think that's what's really key is making sure that if you're going to view the eclipse that you do it safely. And the safest way is with eye protection such as the certified eclipse glasses. Sometimes people may, you know, read things online that suggest other means of uh, viewing the eclipse, but those things are not safe. So things like x-ray film or um, sunglasses, double sunglasses, all of those things are just not safe. And uh, the thing to remember too is that when the sun is completely eclipsed by the moon, that's when the total eclipse happens. And a question that we've been receiving is wondering, is it safe for me to look at the sun at that point? Right. And for all intents and purposes, it is, but there but is why risk. why risk it at that time, yes, right? Yes, there's a risk. you might be sort of mesmerized by the beauty of that and, and forget then, to throw those glasses back on. That's it, exactly it. So I actually think it's quite important to continue to keep the glasses on to make sure you stay safe. So very important when it's partially eclipsed and our eyes, our retinas don't have pain receptors. So if you're looking at the sun, you won't recognize, it's not like you know you have a burn, you're like, ouch, that hurts, right? Our eyes don't have pain receptors, so you're not even going to know that that damage is occurring until it's too late. So when it's partially eclipsed, keep the glasses on, obviously, they need to be on at that point. Even when it's totally eclipsed, I still think it's very important to just keep those glasses on to make sure that you, you know, keep your eyes safe. And that's especially important for young kids, right? We know that right. children aren't, don't always have the capacity to listen, especially our, our littlest little ones. And so again, it's about taking, um, not taking any undue um, risk, right? And so for the little ones, it's probably best just to keep them inside. And um, because, you know, really we should only be wearing the eclipse glasses and looking at the sun if we can be, if we have the capacity to keep them on, which little ones don't always have the capacity to do. I spoke to an optometrist last week and she suggested that even with those eclipse glasses on, you should still take periodic glances up at the sun, not stand there and stare completely at the sun, even with those eclipse glasses on. Would you recommend that as well? I would probably defer to the optometrist on that point because, of course, that would be eye health would be their uh, specific expertise. But certainly, I would trust that if our optometrists are recommending uh, to kind of take breaks even with the glasses on, that probably seems like a wise thing to do. But certainly, would defer to the optometrist on those specific kind of eye questions. Yeah. Public health is really responsible for ensuring that people are safe during this event. Mm -hmm. Schools are closed that day. Was that a very important step towards public safety? Yeah, so good question. So in public health, we're all about planning and we like to engage with our uh, local municipalities as well as partners like fire, police, uh, EMS, um, as well as school boards to make sure that everyone is kept safe during uh, things like an eclipse. So there's been a lot of work since January working with our school boards to make sure that they have the information they need to make decisions around, you know, whether they want to close schools or not. And so they, you know, they came to that decision. Um, and other work that we've been doing is trying to work with municipalities to ensure that they have information they need to expect, you know, traffic delays, road congestion. Certainly there's lots of risk with an influx of people coming to view right. the eclipse. And so we want to make sure that our partners um, are kind of kept in the loop and have the information they need to uh, be able to to keep communities um, themselves safe during the eclipse. Many businesses have opted to close as well, not just so their employees can enjoy the eclipse, can view it this once in a lifetime experience, but also because it makes sense with all of this congestion mm. we're expecting to hit Niagara, why do we want to force people to fight that traffic to get to and from work? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly, you know, it's always good to uh, make sure that we, that businesses have the information they need to make informed decisions to protect, you know, their employees' health. And I think, um, you know, that's great if they um, see that there's a benefit for their business and their employees specifically uh, to protect their health. And of course, that's, you know, we're very supportive of making sure that everyone, no matter what, you know, occupation you're in, you, uh, you have the information you need to stay safe during the eclipse. You talked about speaking with EMS, fire, and police. They've put contingencies in place so that they can respond to emergencies mm -hmm. during this time of lots of people visiting Niagara. Yeah, certainly, you know, again, you know, would want EMS and uh, fire and police to speak to their own specific uh, planning. Uh, that they've done, but um, typically during these types of events, uh, we do see that our partners kind of make sure that they have appropriate staffing and they uh, work with uh, communities to make sure they have the information they need and, and certainly ready to respond if, uh, if they need to. Um, but uh, I know that there's been lots of planning and collaboration with public health uh, to make sure that we, you know, work to keep their community safe and that we can respond should there be any issues. Um, and certainly in public health, our role is really just to make sure that that information is getting out there about, you know, keeping the eclipse glasses on, keeping your eyes safe, uh, don't look at the sun without those glasses, and, um, and making sure that they know where to get glasses. Um, because one thing too that's really important to consider is that, you know, when any time there's an event like this, there's always the risk of products that aren't ISO right. certified. So it's really right. important to make sure your glasses are ISO certified and that includes making sure that the manufacturer's name and address is written on the glasses as well. And also just checking that they aren't wrinkled or scratched because then of course uh, they may not be protecting your eyes. And certainly if anyone puts the glasses on and they find that the sun feels too bright or um, it doesn't feel more, it should be more of like a moonlit glow. And if it's not like that, then don't take any chances. Um, it's you know, we don't want anyone to risk uh, damaging their eyes. It probably means that the glasses aren't as protective as they could be and not wise to use those. Exactly. Yeah. Dr. Jackman, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me.